Hey everyone, it's Lisa from Bear Track Woodworks. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to play with some spalted beech. I picked up a trailer load full from a woman who had an enormous tree that they had to have cut down. Uh, it was it was dead, it was pretty hollow in, in the base. And it was probably, I don't know, three to four feet in diameter at the base. So I took some of the pieces from further up in the, in the trunk so that I would have a better shot at being able to manage them with my small chainsaw. It's only a 16 inch bar. And then when you add the little anti-kickback hoo-ha on there, it's really not very helpful. Um, and yes, I know that sawing directly into end grain is not the preferred method, uh, but at this point I didn't really have a lot of other options, so I will see what I can do about getting a hold of a, a larger chainsaw for situations such as these. When I bought this chainsaw, I had a 12-inch maximum capacity lathe, and this was fine, but now that I have an 18 inch capacity lathe, I want to be able to make some bigger bowls and my chainsaw is uh, going to limit that a little bit. So at this point I have cut out uh, the, the punky spots. The edges were, were pretty punky. The rest of it has seemed to be pretty solid. So hopefully I'm not going to have any issues with it. I went ahead and put it on the bandsaw and got it mostly round, just because I could. Um, I got some longer stainless steel uh, sheet metal screws, number 12, so we won't have any issues with the faceplate uh, <laughs> letting loose this time. And if you missed that little bit of excitement, there's a link to that video in the upper right-hand corner. You should probably go check it out. I always stand out of the line of fire when I start to lay it up. I stuck a moisture meter in this before I put it on the lathe, and I was really surprised that it was still as wet as it is. I think it read 24%.
In addition to building a taller chainsaw station, uh, I want to make myself a little, I don't know, cheat sheet or a guide or story stick or something with the sizes of mortises or tenons for the different size jaws I have for these Nova chucks. I decided to do a mortise on this bowl, but I didn't really have a shape in mind when I started it. And then here I've decided that I don't think that I've got enough meat left there, at least not to make me comfortable. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a tenon on this and hold on to it that way. I don't know if the spalting or any soft spots in the wood would be an issue with the mortise, but I just decided that this would probably be the better way to go. I'm liking this new gouge. Got a pretty nice cut there. Not a whole lot of torn out grain at all. And of course I cut the tenon too big for the set of jaws that I was going to put it on. So I had to make it a little smaller, hence the need for some sort of a chart or a stick that I can just put on there and not have to think about it. Oh boy, I'm going to try a pole cut. I've watched Lyle Jameson's video on a pole cut I don't know how many times. I'm really not sure why I, I have not been able to get the hang of it. Although here, I sort of realized that the tip is supposed to be trailing. The bevel should be in front, and so that definitely helps. I think I'm actually getting a pull cut here. Um, it's just not very smooth. It actually left a really great surface, even on the end grain. Some nice fine little shavings. There's definitely some tool marks left, but that's by far the best pull cut I've ever done. I 
I usually try to leave the tailstock up as long as possible. So the plan is to turn this green, just once turn it green and let it warp and hope that it doesn't crack. So I'm pretty happy with the thickness out at the edge here. I did have a chunk in the, taken out of the rim from one of the soft spots or the wormy spots because this was definitely wormy as well. So I had to take that out. Pushing my luck a little bit there, going back out to the edge, but I got away with it that time. Super high-tech depth gauge. Here I've switched to the new bottom bowl gouge that I ordered, and this is a little bit of a learning curve. I am having a hard time getting the angle of the bevel quite right. I'm still having a little bit of an issue trying to get the bottom of the bowl flat. And so, you know, we just keep going. Oh yeah, just one more cut, just one more. Oh, I gotta clean that up a little bit. One more cut, just gotta, yeah. And we sand, and we cut all the sanding out because I don't really like to do it the first time, and I know you don't want to watch it. I'll we'll denatured alcohol to get the sanding bits out and kind of see what I got to work with. So a one pound cut of shellac used as basically a sealer. GM chalk. And some cushy bits. And we'll take this tenon off. Trying to take nice, easy cuts. One final 
clean up pass along the bottom, smooth it out. And no, that's what I get. Just one more cut. It's gotta get a little bit more. It didn't actually break the bottom out, but into a complete funnel, but it's flexing there. So I've decided this was a practice piece. I got to practice some chainsawing, and I got to practice with my new tools, and I practiced some cuts, and the more I practice, the better I'll get. So thanks for hanging out with me today, and an extra big thanks to all of my subscribers. I really appreciate your support. Everybody be safe out there.